month and a half after Michigan's last mass school shooting and a day after the latest mass shooting at an elementary school in America, parents are again left wondering how their kids can be safe at school. At Covenant School, Nashville police say the shooter used guns to get through the glass and break into the school. Security expert Tom Meinsberg says schools don't need to get rid of glass, though, to be secure. There are films they can put on the door to make them bullet resistant uh, and, and harder to break through. Meinsberg also says just because a school is private like Covenant, it doesn't mean it's less secure. There are times I've seen the private schools and charter schools take more aggressive measures, uh, a little bit more thorough check-in areas, uh, a little bit more in the way of uh, door locks. Michigan laws say that while the state does have control over some things in private schools like construction standards, the legislature is limited on what it can do. Last May, the then Republican-led legislature approved $27 million in funding for schools around the state, both public and private, to get security and safety assessments. I think definitely we need more security in our schools at all levels. I introduced a campus carry bill as well to make sure people have the ability to defend themselves on a college campus. Beyond funding, Education Committee Chair Dana Polhanke is hesitant to write into the law cookie-cutter regulations on schools. I don't think that schools need legislators telling them how they have to spend the money to keep kids safe. Instead, she says schools should be able to decide how they want to use their money to protect students. Every school is different. Every Every school has its own um, challenges in terms of security. Governor Gretchen Whitmer's proposed budget for the next fiscal year, which starts in October, lays out $300 million for schools to specifically improve their student safety. There is no price tag too high. Uh, when it comes to the lives of our kids. When it comes to relatively fast and reliable solutions to keep students safe, Meinsberg says to focus on door locks and stronger doors. Survivors of some of Michigan's most recent mass shooting tragedies were in the nation's capital today to demand Congress pass bills that they say would reduce gun violence. Our political reporter, Rachel Louise Just, has more on how these bills are different from the ones passing through Michigan's legislature. And it's kids and students like me who are paying the price of the inaction of D.C. politicians who are frankly, in my opinion, scamming us. It's past time for action. That's the message from Michigan survivors of gun violence in D.C. today. As Representative Alyssa Slotkin is calling on Congress to take more steps to mitigate the impact of gun violence. This place is about debate and negotiation and compromise, but they refuse to come to the table. They refuse to offer their own ideas. Slotkin introducing three bills on Wednesday, barring gun transfers for three years to someone convicted of a misdemeanor while using or having a gun during the crime, and requiring a seven-day waiting period for gun buyers. The final bill would put $250 million towards researching gun violence prevention through the CDC. But as I looked at her legislation, none of it would really have stopped what took place at Michigan State or in Oxford. Republican Congressman Tim Wahlberg on Wednesday pointing to what he calls radical prosecutors who don't enforce crimes and the larger issue of mental health as a serious issue in the shootings. The solutions you're proposing um, of, of implementing the laws that we do have might need to be on more of a local level. So what could be done from a, a more of a national stage? I'm a bit adverse to the federal government stepping in when we have states and local authorities that can and should be doing what's necessary for their own localities. They know best. Wahlberg says lawmakers in Washington should instead focus on funding for mental health causes. Slotkin's federal bills come a month and a half after the Michigan State shooting that left three students dead and five more seriously hurt. It was the second mass school shooting in Michigan in 15 months, both tragedies falling into Slotkin's congressional district. Is this America's idea of freedom? It's not mine. As Slotkin's legislation is considered in D.C., Michigan is coming off passing more major gun control legislation in the last month and a half than in the last four decades combined.